Okay. Well, thank you, Kota. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the sound. Um, so for people who are watching through Zoom, uh, should be aware that there's a, the sound, if you're listening in stereo from the, uh, watching the, the real video from, from YouTube or wherever, you, there's a, the sound moves around sort of in the space. There's a stereo effects uh, that I think might have been lost uh, uh, just now <laughs> watching it through Zoom. But uh, I hope you uh, were able to get a sense of the, the work. Um, so thank you very much, Kota, for sharing that with us. Thank you so much for <laughs> watching. Um, and so, Kota, I want to uh, get, get started and kind of ask you about the, the development, the origins, and the process of uh, researching and producing this project. Uh, but before I do, uh, I want to let everyone know that uh, we, we're recording the meeting, uh, but when uh, if we you if we use any imagery from this meeting like for i don't know like a promotion or something if anybody is going to be using uh any part of the recording it's just going to be uh me and kota so a uh, participant there's a we can um uh black out or sort of fuzz out um people who are here just as audience members so um, I just want to let you know that, that we are recording, but we're not going to be, um, uh, uh, you know, publicizing anything that, that um, will sort of, um, hope, uh, you know, uh, uh, transgress anyone's privacy. So um, thank you for understanding. Um, so uh, Kota, um, what, I, I, Yes, uh, since we've just shared this uh, uh, video project that you completed last year, right, in 2019, I believe. Um, I was wondering, so I had never heard of uh, the balloon bombs uh, until you had contacted me about them. I guess that was probably in 2018. Um, so we had met when you came to the U.S. to do some of your research. I think you might you made multiple trips, but... Um, that was the first time, it was through you, it was the first time that I uh, heard about these. Uh, I was wondering if you could share how you first learned about them, um, and then maybe from there just describe uh, how you researched the project and, and um, yeah, how it came together. Yeah, uh, I live in uh, Iwaki City in Fukushima, uh, in Japan, uh, it's uh, east uh, nearby the Pacific Ocean. Then, uh, while I was uh, researching about the local history uh, in my town, I encountered with the Balambo history. The one day I uh, participated in the uh, local historical uh, study groups. Uh, gathering and do a short trip around the, uh, my town uh, to look through the, some of the ruins and the uh, landscape which has a uh, uh, history of the uh, <coughs> uh, industry and the uh, war. Then, uh, that was the uh, uh, occasion to uh, know about the Bangun for me. So it was my town's history. And two years ago, I got the grant to, uh, for residency in the US. So, so I decided to do a uh, research, uh, uh, research trip about the Bangun in the US. So before that, uh, I visited the uh, some places in, uh, related to the Bangkok in Japan, the my town and uh, the the other town next to my town uh, used to have the uh, place where the Bangkok was released uh, to the air. 
um, yeah. So, yeah, I uh, explain about uh, my project more. Mm. So, yeah. just, just very briefly, if you could just describe the um, mm. how uh, um, how you located the sites and sort of what kind of equipment you used to um, yeah. do the filming. I guess kind of uh, the the equipment, I guess, is one aspect, but also the the social social aspect of of meeting people and uh, archives and things like that. Just if you could give a just general sense of. Um, Uh, as you saw my video that I used to, I mainly used a, a small drone uh, for uh, shooting the, uh, some places where the balloon bomb was released and the balloon bomb fell down. And uh, I also uh, went to the National Archives and to, to see the document uh, of the <clears throat> U.S. military. Uh, it was a record about the gun. Then, uh, after the, uh, so mainly I did the <clears throat> research and the shooting the landscape of the, the places uh, which are, which has the history of the bombs and the documents. And after I returned to Japan, I uh, mixed with the other topics uh, related to the uh, remote technology and uh, the topics uh, related to the balloon bomb history and the war history and the history in my, uh, in my town and the Fukushima. So, yeah. Could I uh, show the, uh, explain the brief, brief explanation about the balloon bomb? Um, yeah, so if you can share your yeah. screen, you can, yeah. So, uh, at the end of the World War Second. Uh, the Japanese weapon was uh, attacking the mainland of the United States uh, by this war. Uh, it was called the balloon bomb. The Japanese army tied the bombs uh, to the balloons filled with hydrogen and they released them towards the sky from the east coast in Japan. So it is an operation that the uh, westerly wind blows this balloon to America and explodes somewhere. It sounds very story, but the uh, Japanese army released approximately over 9,000 balloons uh, seriously, and hundreds of them delivered to the land of the North American continent. Explosions, uh, and suspicious fires, balloons themselves uh, were found in various places. Then in Oregon, uh, as I shown in the video, uh, six people were killed by the weapon, and the balloon also fell down nearby the nuclear facility in Washington state uh, that was producing the plutonium or atomic bombs. So, 
yeah, so this uh, the brief ex brief information with Berlin bomb. And we could know such info just the uh, Wikipedia. Then I wanted to pass you more detailed and uh, physically about the bomb. This is a, a image from the uh, German artist filmmaker Harun Faroki. Uh, my trip started from the motivation to shoot the phantom image of the Balenbon. Phantom image was timed by the artist Harun Faroki. It's a, uh, it means the uh, image is mediated massively during uh, Gulf War, imagined with the cruise missiles in 1980s, uh, so-called smart bombs. In his words, the, the film footage of a camera that is plugging towards its target a suicidal camera stays in our mind. We can interpret the film that takes up the perspective of the bombs as a phantom subjective image, he said. So my initial motivation was to uh, remake the uh, phantom image of the balloon bomb. So it's like uh, the Japanese version of uh, Arun Baroki. So that's, so you were thinking, you're thinking of trying to create the kind of the, the bomb's eye view or the balloon's eye view yes, of yes. balloon bombs um, with this idea. It's kind of, I think maybe uh, we're familiar with the, those images from the kind of nose of the smart, of smart bombs that uh, as they're kind of going, going right towards their target. So but recreating this for these balloon bombs, um, which were, yeah. and there's, there is a continuity of like the, uh, these are kind of remote weapons that travel between the continents um, that, um, and this is R Ross Cohen's here, here with us. So he, he's written a book in English about uh, the balloon bombs and I think he makes the point that this is the first intercontinental um, uh, sort of remote uh, weapon that's, that's used. So there is some uh, continuity to uh, smart bombs and, and drones. Um, but yeah. there's... Yeah, but there is a, also the difference between uh, balloons and the remote, uh, the contemporary remote bombs. Uh, mm. yeah, it's a uh, uh, vision and control. Uh, Remote uh, missiles, drones uh, uh, aim at target uh, on the far side of the globe, be controlled by uh, soldiers. So it's mani manip manipulative image. But the balloon bomb have no way to see, uh, no way to see the target. There was no control uh, by soldiers, so such bombs as the uh, uh, super eye, Barumhau has no eye. So maybe uh, this is my production or the uh, productive produced eye view. It's not the uh, exact uh, perspective of the balloon bomb. So, so this is uh, why I defined uh, the balloon bomb as a blind bomb. Mm. 
and the process the process of reconstructing uh, in so it's reconstructed based on uh, historical documentation and visiting sites and meeting people who witnessed them or maybe who had relatives or friends who witnessed them uh, but the reconstruction is still uh, a, a reconstruction uh, and imagine imagining the uh, the 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 particular the, the specific site where the one of them landed can't be completely sort of you uh, can't can't uh, pin it down with complete accuracy and many of them yeah, were, it, mm. yeah it was uh, uh, difficult to yeah, pinpoint yeah and I was wondering in terms of the the question of the remote monitoring so the with the contemporary drones it's kind there's uh the ability of the soldiers the pilots to see what to see from where the drone is um but with the balloon bombs it's the, the blind bombs um it's like in in the film you uh there's different you talk about the it's uh, it's not just the bombs that are blind it's uh, right so it's the there's like the um during world war 2 at the end in 1943 44 1945 the there's sort of me, so much control of media in japan and in the us uh that it seems like you are also making a comment about a more general kind of blindness yeah like so, mm. can you say more about that yeah blind uh yes as you said uh, the my grandparents generation made the balloons and and they all they could do was uh, look up the balloons uh, being disappeared into the sky and by strict material law uh, it is forbidden uh, to talk about the balloons and after the war, the Japanese military disposed of uh, official documents related to the development of the balloons. So uh, the blindness has uh, more meaning of uh, the censorship and uh, loss of the official document of history. So I feel the feel like the blindness uh, of various various meaning. <laughs> and in some ways, the the blindness kind of creates the potential for. I'm thinking about kind of back at the, during the war, creates kind of blank screen or like a blank slate, where the uh, more like fantasy or. Uh, you can kind of project anything that you want onto the blank, onto the blindness, sort of in the absence of the real, real information. The, the, there's, uh, you can imagine uh, scenarios that are uh, sort of comfortable or uh, uh, affirming to your position or to yourself. Um, to uh, you mean the so like the you had um I think it was an interview with somebody talking about the balloons sort of going off uh, from the launch site maybe in Iwaki so one mm -hmm. after the other and then uh, um the the girls the who were making the the fabric for the balloons kind of celebrating when they were told that you know they were they were causing a lot of damage and destruction in the united states that that kind of uh it's, uh, um, it's potential to to imagine sort of uh something that uh any anything that kind of makes yourself oneself or uh seem stronger or in better position or uh, yes, aff affirmed. Uh, sorry, the 
Could you can uh, uh, is it your question or? Mm. Yeah, so I uh, was uh, trying to kind of connect to, so I guess one way to see the balloon bombs is as being quite different, quite disconnected from the con contemporary society. Um, mm -hmm. So you could see them as being sort of like a, an early and basically failed attempt at sort of remote weaponry. Uh, but I feel like the the you're also interested in the kind of mental situation, the kind of uh, mental condition that goes, that makes something like this possible. Is kind of a ment, there's a mental space that goes along with this kind of uh, balloon, which launching a balloon, this has this tremendous destructive power, but launching it up into the winds and letting it go. And then in its absence, imagining uh, things, the result of that action as, as something that fulfills your desire, that fulfills your desire, that f uh, sort of completes its course in a way that uh, rewards uh, oneself. But it specifically because there's, there is, there, specifically because it's blind, right? Because there's no, there isn't the kind of, uh, awareness there isn't the knowledge about what actually happens to most of the balloon bombs so the the blindness in uh, for the past uh, the people in past uh, they didn't have uh, the enough information and there is a censorship and the blindness uh, for me uh, it's uh, Difficult to see or to know because because it, it's a uh, uh, old story uh, more than uh, seventy years ago. So <clears throat> uh, I think my shooting is uh, both. It has both meaning uh, connecting the uh, two kind of uh, brightness of the past and present. And also, uh, I want to update the uh, image of the balloon bomb uh, from the my grandparents' generation. Because of the blindness, uh, my grandparents' generation uh, imagined the enemy uh, imagine the enemy and uh, just imagine the effect of the balloon bombs but I, I think no, nobody uh, see uh, saw it directly so I wanted to update the uh, image of the the balloons. So it's like uh, the uh, double meaning in uh, blindness and uh, the visualization mm -hmm. of image of uh, balloons. Uh, the post meaning uh, video has, I think so. Mm. So the, the uh, blindness makes a f certain kind of violence uh, possible, but it's, it's kind of a violence that's very safe for the for the people who are uh, for the person who launches, say, the balloon. And it's speaking maybe more generally than just the balloon bombs themselves, but uh, kind of violence that's very safe, uh, comfortable, even for the uh, the person launching <laughs> launching the the balloon. Uh, it's very, uh, there's no sort of direct uh, feedback. There's no direct contact with uh, the destructiveness or the suffering that that action causes. So it's the, the, remote, uh, the remote nature of the, the event that's supposed to happen at the end of that, like as a result of that uh, initial uh, release. Um, so if, uh, 
you can uh, you've connected it with like uh, um, people's relationships with each other in sort of contemporary uh, social media. This is the way there's a uh, there's a way to that uh, the kind of connectivity or disconnectivity. It's a weird kind of connectivity. Uh, it's questionable kind of connectivity that allows for people to sort of make statements, make claims uh, that sort of float away from them into the ether. Um, but the the where those things land, where those statements or claims or or even like verbal violence, right, can be harassment, uh, it can be verbal attacks uh, through this kind of uh, social media. But where that where those kinds of things land is so uh, it's not visible. It's blind. It's the the person who initiates that is never really made. Can never really sense the impact that it might have. But at the same at the same time, it might not have any impact, right? So that, that, that's the point. Uh, I realized after my trip, so after I returned to Japan and uh, while sorting the uh, video and the photo materials, I should shopping US and uh, so I, after the I, yeah, I, I need, needed to uh, compare with the uh, paper remote to uh, blind for uh, the blind uh, <coughs> or the blind home and uh, you know, do you know in recent days, uh, uh, some uh, some people in Palestine, uh, in Gaza district, uh, they use the balloon bomb, mm. uh, or smaller. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, small balloon. Uh, filled with helium mm. and uh, they use the small balloon bomb to attack the uh, Israel. So it's not a, a, a remote bomb for, uh, to over the continent, uh, over the ocean, just over the water. So, There is a, uh, uh, I can also compare with a contemporary small balloon bomb, uh, which, has, which is used by the people in Palestine and uh, the advanced technology uh, remote control the drone uh, developed by Israel. Mm. So, if I say the uh, all balloon bomb is just blind or uh, just violent, maybe I I may ignore such uh, the gap of the uh, drone by Israeli or America and uh, very low technology. Uh, from just by personal people. Mm. So it's, it's, it is like the, uh, it, it makes, made me uh, to think more about uh, what is the uh, point of violence. So then I, uh, Reach to the uh, one conclusion: the the distance uh, is uh, has the uh, potential of the violent a uh, long distance to overcome the very very long distance, uh, like to uh, fly over the ocean. Mm. So. <clears throat> I 
show the Tenome Yokai monster mm. and uh, hands by the researchers and historians, the local residents. Uh, their behavior seems also seems like also the blindness uh, for the past. But I, I feel it's uh, it's far from the violent of the drone because uh, they are on the ground and mm -hmm. they use a hand and the hand is uh, connected to their body. And me also, I, I have the hand connected to my body, my life, and touch the documents and uh, ground and the monument directory. It's, uh, I want to call it, it is uh, people's uh, fundamental behavior for the, for intelligence, mm. information. But uh, just uh, see something from uh, mm. uh, object uh, using the remote technology, like my drone. Mm. Uh, it's uh, very nearby the uh, environment. Uh, it has the potential of the violent attacking. So there is a gap uh, from the hands to eyes and ground to and ground to the sky mm. and uh, low technology and high technology, advanced technology. So that, this is uh, this is the idea from the uh, comparing with the, uh, small volume bomb in Persia and uh, drone in Israel. Israel. Mm. So overcoming the uh, long distance has the uh, potential of the environment. I thought. Mm. Uh, I, I want to note, uh, I, I do not deny advanced technology or remote technology I, because now I'm using uh, remote technology for, uh, do, to do meeting with you guys and I'm one of the users of it. Rather than discarding the advanced technology, uh, I just would like to explore uh, what kind of technology it is. It means the, to see what kind of the world we live today. Mm. So it's not like technological kind of determinism where like all, all sort of drone, drone imagery is like automatically uh, violent and alienating, but there's there's also truth as you were saying to this the idea that when you're on the ground talking to actual people and interacting with them and using your hands and feet to kind of uh figure things out it's a diff different kind of knowledge than you get from the more abstract uh elevated perspective uh that you get from I mean, there's d different kinds of sort of sensitivities that come into play if you're on the ground somewhere, sort of wind and um, so as play of light and uh, you know vegetation and things. So it's a kind of it seems like a much rich, richer, some uh, uh, more complicated kind of environment and, and way of getting, way of contacting, way of coming into contact with uh, the world, the world with other people. Mm. Other, so we're getting to, kind of, we're getting towards five o'clock. I was wondering if other do other people want to uh, ask questions of of Kota. Um, I'm also happy to kind of keep keep asking questions. Um, 
but I also don't want to kind of dominate and get in the way if, if people have, have questions that they'd like to ask. If you'd like to ask a question, you can just kind of move and click on your microphone icon on the bottom left of the, the screen, and then you should be able to uh, speak. Azusa, did you want to ask anything? Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Azusa Tanaka. I'm a Japanese Hello. studies librarian at UW. Yeah, thank you very much for um, this um, screening and uh, making a wonderful uh, film. Um, it seems like the um, one of the themes of this film, uh, as I think Justin and uh, um, director, uh, you've been talking about um, is like vision, blindness, maybe censorship and then information manipulation. And I couldn't help um, but associating all these things um, to what's happening right now in Japan um, in dealing with those, you know, the pandemic and Corona um, spreading, you know, how the government is dealing with the issue. Um, I feel the mentality of like kamikaze or creating this kind of balloon bomb, which um, is nothing very scientific or very realistic or well thought um, in a way I feel. Um, and then now, you know, in dealing with the pandemic, how the Japanese government is dealing with, I felt there is some sort, sort of association. I'm not sure if you agree with that, but uh, if you think there is similar mentality from Japan back in World War II period and now, um, what is that? <laughs> I wonder um, what's uh, mm -hmm. underneath the, you know, this country um, dealing with either, you know, the visible enemy like the U.S. in the case back in World War II or the virus now invisible enemy. Like why Japan deals with things like that in this way? Uh, thank you. The, I think Now the, the coronavirus problem is uh, under the process, so um, I'm still thinking, observing uh, what's going on. Honestly, it, it is difficult uh, to grasp, grasp the or to uh, associate uh, or connect to the attitude to the technology. But uh, I just want to say that blindness is one of the attitude of the Japanese typical um, behavior to the technology. Uh, my impression of Western country uh, created the, the uh, technology to view the uh, detailed image of the object uh, far from the uh, uh, in uh, long distance. But uh, Japan made uh, uh, ideology uh, more and more tense by uh, not to see. So recently, uh, the drone techno 
Diamond aircraft and uh, hobby drone uh, used for the uh, video artwork or the performance something. And I saw many excellent artworks uh, by using the drone. Uh, but my impression Japan in Japan the, the works by using the using drone is just celebrating the uh, technology itself. Uh, not to see the history of the technology or the dark side of the technology. So in uh, Fukushima, uh, after the 2011 nuclear disaster, uh, now people are building the new uh, towns and uh, do the effort to uh, make the new industry uh, to reconstruct, rebuild the uh, town again. So they invite the uh, companies uh, for the advanced technology. So drone is used for the uh, demonstration or the advertisement uh, for the uh, reconstruction story towards the bright future. So personally, I hope uh, the people uh, who want to return to the town uh, the government should support and uh, uh, I hope the reverse of the Fukushima coast area. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I think I should uh, keep uh, Keep calm down uh, to see the what kind of uh, technology uh, is uh, utilized for the making the uh, reconstruction uh, recovery story. <laughs> so. Mm, About the information disaster uh, of nuclear accident and uh, the new virus issue, uh, I feel that it's not only the um, nowadays, uh, not only the government, uh, all people who relate to the uh, who use uh, remote technology. Uh, face to the violent and uh, put, have the potential to you uh, use the technology to attack somebody or to explore enemy and uh, spreading false information or something. Mm. Yeah, it's not only for the only the problem of the uh, nationalism or something. Mm. Could you maybe, it's, I feel like there might be some parallel between uh, uh, the issues of uh, 311 uh, and radiation and something like the, the coronavirus as uh, it's kind of a danger that's very difficult to quantify. I mean, it's invisible. It's difficult to quantify, or it's very it is very variable. Uh, 
in, in a way that you know, seems impossible to predict how how dangerous a particular situation is. Um, but also maybe because of that ambiguity, it seems to spur a lot of anxiety and also a lot of um, maybe partly as a, uh, as a way to deal with anxiety, but there's a lot of people, people kind of, pe the, the volume of people's voices goes up uh, in, as a, it becomes sort of like a, a mediated problem um, I was wondering if uh, if you saw some parallels between uh, Fukushima post and kind of post uh, 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 the nuclear accident um, and uh, the the situation now. And maybe also, if you just wanted to introduce some one of one of some of your works about uh, deal with radiation or Fukushima. Mm -hmm. Or it's, you know you you live in the areas kind of uh, nearby, uh, not very far from the exclusion zone. So you have maybe a particular perspective on that. Uh, you mean the uh, my recent trial or the, my past works related to the Fukushima? Hmm. Maybe uh, the recent one, meaning the 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 font that you're making, or maybe earlier than that. Mm. The uh, okay, quickly I say uh, first I uh, show this video as a representative of this uh, performance. This mm. is a performance work uh, in the nuclear accident site. Then I moved to Fukushima. And Can you put the diagram of that one, the pencil diagram from the finger pointing worker? Diagram. The, oh, sorry? Where, the diagram where it shows the link, yeah, the, the link of the network that the camera was connected to. Um, so the the, for the photograph was, the camera actually was connected to the internet. So um, I, guess, I guess it was because there's a lot of criticism about what was happening at the site and the cleanup. And so the TEPCO, the electricity company wanted to make it open for people to view the site through, the cam through these cameras. Yes. So the person, the performer, here in the suit, the worker used the camera that was actually the signal from that camera was being was public, basically, right? So people could watch it online. Is that well, right? This yeah, this time the the problem is uh, there is a center of the issue. Mm. The nuclear power plant is uh, uh, center of the accident, mm. so. Every radioactive material is uh, released from uh, this plant. So, mm. uh, yeah, people uh, were in the panic and uh, there was an uh, information disaster and uh, false information. But it was uh, simply a simple, simpler than current situation because the virus issue has uh, now, there is no center of this uh, uh, pandemic. Yeah, very early, early stage of the pandemic, the, it was from uh, China or Asia, but uh, it becoming, uh, there are many places of uh, many places of centers of the virus. So this uh, diagram became a bit old. <laughs> mm. I, I think so. Mm. But uh, I believe the 
just the relation between one user and uh, one device um, and uh, uh, connected to the world is uh, the same. Uh, I think it's the same. All information spreaders uh, feel the feel comfortable or good for, good good for their uh, narcissism and to satisfy themselves uh, by spreading or information and touching the uh, devices and uh, checking their uh, articles and their figures by uh, their monitors. Mm. So it's the relationship between the users and uh, uh, internet. Mm. So for the for the worker who is looking at their mobile device, it's a, a kind of it's just a, a loop that completes this image of themselves. It's kind uh, kind of like a mirror, a, a little bit different, but the the yeah, kind of kind of mirror. Mm. So yeah, so. In early age of the internet, in the 90s, uh, people believed the story that everything will be connected to the world openly, and it helps our uh, society uh, to support the equality of uh, our discussion. Uh, there are many nodes and links, but uh, nowadays, we uh, realize the internet is not so open. Uh, there are many closed to circle, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, closed uh, groups uh, generated by social network services. So and many, many yeah, many closed. Saku uh, makes the information domestic, so it's not so good, good situation for the uh, evaluate all the informations equally. Mm. And people, many, uh, many, well, one, I'm not sure if many, many people, but and many times people seem to use the internet just to connect to themselves or to verify themselves. Um, yeah. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not sort of <laughs> connecting with others, learning, learning di difference. Uh, you know, contacting as uh, uh, you know, being being moved in new directions. It's not not necessarily uh, functioning in that in that direction. Mm. So most most of the viewers, uh, the users itself, uh, themselves. So I think the. Most fun of this uh, video is a finger pointed worker himself. It's the same as the, if you write something in the uh, Facebook mm. articles, um, but most most viewers of the uh, article is the writer writer himself. Uh, somebody is a uh, the oh, somebody answer. had a hand up. Yeah. I think we might be getting close to the time when the um, meeting has to wrap up. Oh, um, Ms. AC, AC Peterson. That's me. I have my hand up. Yeah, Can go for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kotasan, for that. Um, it's provocative. Uh, makes me think a lot. <laughs> Um, I'm very interested in the uh, the balloon bomb and the fugo, and I'm interested in actually in the the schoolgirls who were forced to create these. And um, how much do you think they really knew or um, were told um, when they made these about what they were really used for? Oh. 
Are you asking the uh, amount of the funds or the? Um, the I'm people? asking because I know they 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 uh, recruited schoolgirls or forced them to make these balloons mm -hmm. and assemble them. And um, were they really told honestly about what they were doing? Um, I mean, if they were making bombs, they probably would know. But if they were making these balloons, I just imagine if, if I were a schoolgirl, I would sort of be in denial and I would want to say, we're making these beautiful objects, you know, beautiful artistic objects. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't really want to know. What's your thought? Is this a question of uh, uh, my impression of the, uh, the uh, students, people who uh, produce the funds? Yes, uh, a question of, of what, your what impressions. Um, I, I think uh, they knew uh, what, what they are uh, producing, uh, what they're making. Uh, not, not so, they, they had not so uh, detailed information, but uh, they uh, believed the uh, story, uh, something uh, they are making the weapon and at attack, the, to attack the enemy. And uh, I think uh, they are not completely innocent um, from making the weapon. But uh, making the weapon was uh, justice in their, uh, in, this day, in those days. So, I can imagine some their feelings by uh, reading the uh, novels and uh, articles uh, written by the people who used to make the brain. Uh, nowadays, uh, the, uh, some people Talk, uh, talk about the Burning Bones and uh, publish the novels. So, and uh, they reflect themselves. Uh, they didn't uh, think uh, it is wrong the making the weapons uh, bad or wrong, because that was the justice for them. Uh, am I answering for you exact answer, is it? Yes, I was just curious about your impressions. I mean, it's, I guess it's similar to uh, women in the United States, uh, you know, riveting uh, airplanes and weapons, oh. you know, Rosie the Riveter. Um, but I just, I just, I, think it's was, I was just imagining that some of the, um, some of the schoolgirls who maybe didn't want to build a bomb would just sort of make up a little story in their head about what they were making, just, just be in denial about it. Um, but, but I can understand the, the patriotic um, uh, theme that would be going through it. So, yes, yes, thank you. No, I think same as the US. Does any, it looks like it, so we were concerned that the meeting might shut itself down at 5.15, but it looks like it hasn't. So <laughs> um, does anyone have one last question? I had a question, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for organizing this uh, uh, event. Um, uh, I, I was 
wondering uh, about uh, con connections to some of your prior works, such as Portable Mind Yokohama um, and uh, the, the story uh, of um, uh, these wanted posters uh, and oh. one of the perpetrators of the Elm Shinmikyo um, sarin gas attacks. Um, you know, being an old picture on the wanted posters and then going to try to turn himself in uh, and uh, the police officers at the police box saying, oh, no, you can't be this person. Uh, this is like a, a famous uh, most wanted poster uh, celebrity uh, and having to go to like, numerous police boxes in order to, to turn himself in. Um, I think that you know, your commentary on your kind of paintings of these most wanted posters about how uh, works you can, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these, these most wanted posters kind of becoming just part of the environment and um, no longer communicating a threat, uh, but simply um, uh, kind of making people more vulnerable to uh, danger um, has a connection that I don't, totally understand uh, about or in connection to the way that information about the balloon bombs was censored in North America and in Japan, where uh, say the, this, these children may not have died if there were, this information was widely available uh, and they wouldn't have thought, oh, these balloons are toys that I can play with and then be blown up. Um, I just feel that that, uh, uh, that insight in both of these, these projects has a lot to say about kind of the availability of information today, um, especially as the balloon bomb moment um, came about at, and during this kind of anti-Japanese uh, sentiment that was already there in the country. Um, uh, even kind of uh, thinking about the availability of information now with the coronavirus as uh, kind of xenophobic, um, kind of anti-Asian generalized uh, sentiment is so so pervasive. Um, I don't know if you could uh, comment on that uh, kind of sense of how concealing the danger actually um, kind of makes uh, 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 people more vulnerable to to violence. <laughs> so, uh, are you uh, asking something or the, was it the opinion? Uh, it's my opinion. Uh, oh, okay. Connecting to this prior work. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, but, uh, I'm wondering if you uh, kind of feel similarly uh, about um, where uh, the, uh, that the concealing of information actually can increase the danger for, say, these these children especially. Uh, Maybe I'm interested in the uh, the border of violence and the border of violence and the, the daily life. So. The wanted to follow uh, uh, images uh, first uh, are in early stage of the uh, incident. Uh, we we are uh, it it was a scary image, but uh, it becoming the uh, they uh, just a, a part of the landscape. Because the wanted to flag the images are spread uh, all over the Japan, and uh, people realize uh, that the more uh, time passes, uh, his images uh, becomes far from the. Except uh, the wanted the face itself, and people 
become um, not so tense and uh, not, not to be uncomfortable uh, from this image. And Baron Wong history, uh, first time I uh, heard about the Baron, uh, I didn't feel the uh, impression uh, it can be the weapon, the balloon, because balloons are the, sometimes uh, the event of uh, something celebration or the uh, people uh, fly the many uh, colored fancy balloons and the children like the balloons. Uh, it's peaceful image. So it was difficult to uh, connect the violent uh, to the uh, button, uh, button. So I think the Strange feeling to the balloon bomb is uh, maybe it's similar to the feeling to the wanted to provocative uh, image, uh, which became the just daily land landscape, daily uh, life's landscape. Uh, both has a uh, um, memory of the violent, but uh, images become the less tense, become more um, not so special. Such kind of, uh, yeah, such, Yes, uh, and, and uh, as you said uh, the, about the, the environment of the information itself is uh, uh, both is, has a uh, um, similar feeling, uh, I felt a similar feeling from the uh, both of them. <laughs> mm. But um, maybe I have to say the co about coronavirus. Uh, um, now I'm not. I'm not sure the, um, what is the image of the fear or scare. Uh, maybe now there is a people who feel the. The violent or danger of the virus itself. And if there are the other people who feel uh, uneasy or scary to the people or information, so it is difficult to uh, find it the image of the uh, common bias for me now. now. Mm. Right. So uh, I think we're kind of uh, to gradually uh, losing people as they as they go back to <laughs> wherever they're going back to. Um, but uh, so I think we should uh, wrap up here. Um, but I wanted to say thank you to, to Kota for, for joining us from early in the morning um, <laughs> and uh, sharing his work with us. Um, 
the links to his uh, his website including includes his portfolio and um, it's a very nice essay that he's written uh, it's kind of uh, in relation to blind bombing um, uh, filmed by a bat so uh, that uh, kind of expands on some of the issues that uh, we discussed today but also that I think that are kind of implicit maybe nascent below the surface in in this work so if you have time I encourage you to go back and um, uh, go to his his website and and uh, click through to um, some of the additional material he has there it's a, it's a really interesting uh, essay um, and uh, it's a great great work I wish you could have come come back and visited physically and sort of gotten your feet on the ground again here so um, so that you could have and uh, that you know the the memorial ceremony I imagine was to take place on the fifth um, or, or thereabouts um, the, yeah I wish wish it could have happened but hopefully I'm sure it will be happening um, in the future at some point and so we look forward to when you can um, come back, come back physically again, and um, uh, and join us, uh, join us again. So, and thank you for everyone who's who who uh, joined us. For, I don't know where everyone's coming in from, but uh, it's great to see you. Um, and thank you very much, and thank you, Takota. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so. I'm gonna see you again. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we can maybe. Thank you. Bye, Danny. Thank Thanks. you for coming.